I've waited 541 days to show you this. Welcome back, World War Three. It's been way too long. Welcome back to the channel, Tactical Gamers. My name is Tacti. Now, if you've been following the channel for a while now, you'll know that World War III is a huge part of the channel. It holds a special part in my heart. It's the game that started and grew this channel actually pretty rapidly. And now it's back on the channel as a brand new game. And as if this comes as a surprise to you, I'm incredibly stoked. This game is very impressive and nearly unrecognizable from the original build. If you haven't been keeping up with this game or this is your first time seeing it, I'm gonna give you a brief history. But before we get into that, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more of this game as this is likely going to be the primary game on my channel mixed with other games, primarily hardcore tactical shooters. Thank you so much for your support. Now, here's the history. This game is a game that was originally released in 2018 into early access, but due to the lack of players and also a publishing partnership with MyDot Games, the game was pulled from the store to be refined and now is preparing for a re-release as a completed game within the coming months. And so all this footage you're seeing here is from the Veterans Alpha build, which is a large scale test for anybody that had the original game purchased. So that's what I wanna give a brief overview on. I wanted to give you my initial thoughts and impressions of the current build, some of the good, some of the bad, and some of the ugly. But keep in mind as well, this is just after the first day of playing. So I may spot some things later that I dislike more. Some of the things may come up over the weekend, so I may have to talk about more of those things. But that's the lens that I'm coming from right now. Let's start out with the ugly, because there are a couple things that need mention, and while they're ugly, they're not real concerns for the future, uh, as this is just the alpha build, and these issues will probably get ironed out, and I hope they get ironed out. The squad system was pretty borked. I jumped in and attempted to play with my buddy Blue the Robot and another fella from his Discord, and we just weren't able to squad up. I, I, eventually, we were able to. We kind of had a workaround, but we had a whole lot of difficulties just trying to get into a lobby together and join the game together. It was pretty obnoxious. But with this being the first time that it's tested on a large scale like this, I'm not incredibly shocked. The same goes for the servers. There were several times this first day that the servers died and we weren't able to get back into the game. Not really sure what the issue was here, but they briefly fixed it and then it would go offline for a while. So I, I don't know what was going on here, but it's something that will definitely need fixed. And when they expand this into the beta in the future, it's gonna get tested again. So we'll just have to see how that works out. Hopefully the release goes smoothly. Now, moving on to one specific gripe I have, the one that makes this game nearly unplayable. This atrocity, a red dot magnifier used as a side scope. Now, sure, it's not a huge deal, but good grief, guys, don't do this. This here, okay, point this out. This here is a hinge. This is supposed to hinge over to be in front of the red dot while you're aiming down the sights. It's not used as a canted 2X. This is very, very painful to see, especially on the sniper rifle. I, I, I don't know where they got this idea from. I, I don't know. And onto another one that really stood out to me is the player to player collisions and movements when you're beside each other. It's somewhat clunky because attempting to maneuver in small hallways or through doorways does not feel smooth at all. There's more bumping and grinding in these small places than your high school homecoming dance. And that's not a good thing. Okay, now onto what the game does well, because there were actually a lot of things that this game did well. The game runs very, very smoothly. I was playing at 1440p with a Ryzen 3700X and GTX 1070 Ti, which I know that's kind of a bulky setup in general. The 1070 Ti might be uh, going out of style, but I rarely had issues with this rig. I ran the game both on Tac Ops mode, which is their large scale mode, and Team Deathmatch, and I rarely dipped under 100 frames, if ever, while running on ultra settings. The entire time. This is important, and I'll pull up the minimum and recommended specs here. For looking this good, the game doesn't require all that much. I saw the Battlefield specs, and it looks to me like my hardware is going to be a bit out of date to get that ultra quality that I like to play at, but we'll see when the final product gets here. But with this game's new lighting, the colors, the weapon textures, they're all incredibly well done in my opinion. One of the things though visually that I would say this game could tweak a bit is the player visibility. It's not terrible, but there are many times you can lose your targets in the shadows or have difficulty in target acquisition 
time between one player to another, it's just somewhat difficult to see. And I'm not talking about a full blown outline of the players, nothing like that, but I don't know, maybe tweaking the contrast a bit, maybe tweaking the shadows, but I don't I don't know what you need to do when it comes to this. I'm not a game dev, but it, it does need to be a little bit, uh, they need to stand out a little bit more. That's what I'll say. Speaking of seeing players to kind of go along with this, I wanna talk about what happens when you get close to a player, because this is something that I found somewhat frustrating as well. When you get too close to players, specifically your teammates, everything nearly disappears. So you can't tell whether it's a friendly or an enemy. Maybe that's because I've changed some of my HUD elements because I've shrinked some and I've modified the opacity a little bit because you can do that all in the menu. But that part was very, very frustrating to me. There were a couple of times that I shot my own teammates when I didn't mean to. There were a couple of times where I didn't shoot because I thought it was my teammate. So that's probably something that needs changed as well. Now, I wanna talk about the new animations. Just as a reference, I wanna show you the old M4 reload. And then I want to show you this new one here. These animations have changed so much that they're top notch. And when coupled with a new movement system and the new vaulting system and the transitional movements, the game feels fantastic. The movement feels very good other than those collisions. I did get somewhat annoyed on the rocks at Polyarni. I felt like those were a bit janky still, but the game still feels 100% more refined. And with those more flat surfaces, everything runs smoothly. All right, let's talk about the gunplay and ballistics a bit, because this is where the game really shines. I think the ballistic system in World War III was fantastic even before this. And now coupled with the new gunplay and animations, you're gonna have one of the best infantry experiences coming out as a free to play title and in general. And by best, I mean best, a low time to kill coupled with an advanced armor system to where you're only protected at the head and at your plate carrier makes for a really great balance between hardcore and casual gameplay. And it's somewhat part of their idea for playable realism. That's a phrase that they tend to use quite a bit when it comes to this game. This felt great and the way the system is set up, nearly every weapon is viable other than maybe the shotguns since they've got the range of a slingshot, but the other weapons are great and shotguns aren't my thing anyway, so I really don't care. The sounds all around are pretty great. All the weapons, at least those available in this build, have been reworked and sound so much better than what they did prior. I did have some difficulty when it comes to directional audio. Uh, it was occasionally hard for me to determine exactly where the enemy was. It was hard for me to determine how close the enemy was or where some shots were coming from. So maybe that needs tweaked a little bit as well. But overall, the sounds are much, much better. They've added some different ambient sounds to the maps as well. So that really sucks you in. It makes it not feel like a a lifeless map when you're just standing there. Customization has improved, not only in the sense of the amount of customization available, but also in the balancing of each attachment. Each attachment offers pros and cons and has a purpose. There's also a grind now involved, which I think is a good thing because it holds player retention because it makes me work for something. That's not everybody's favorite thing. I know it was nice before you could just earn the points and buy whatever you needed, but I kind of like this better. And just one thing to note when it comes to weapon and weapon attachment unlocks, they stress in a presentation the day before that everything that can be unlocked here is all through gameplay right so anything that you're going to buy is likely going to be just skins just cosmetics so that could be a very very good thing i know there's a lot of fears for that pay to win but it appears as this is going to be a free-to-play game that all the monetization is just going to be cosmetic now i guess they could throw in there a rose skin if they wanted to and make you pay extra for that but I, I don't really have any fears it's going to be pay to win. The devs have been adamant that it's not, so I'm just gonna take them at their word with that. But like all games, we'll see how that progresses down the line. But while we're here, let's talk about monetization. The game is going to have a couple different currencies, as you can see at the top of the screen here, and then there's going to be a battle pass to grind for, specifically I'm guessing cosmetics and maybe some operators or, or something along those lines. And also a store that you can buy skins from and, and possibly some blueprints as well. We can't see those in the alpha build, but it'll be interesting to to see what sort of things that they bring into this section right here. Overall in this build, there are about 19 weapons and 23 strikes and a boatload of cosmetics. I know this alpha is just a taste and likely will be heavily expanded, but that's a very, very good thing. This entire game is going to be incredible when it comes to customization. Just take a look real quick at how in depth this is. Let's just take this standard Anders tank destroyer. You're able to choose the type of primary gun, the type of ammo, the secondary gun, the armor style, the optics, and with all of those parts, all of those physical parts, you can change the camo for each one of those parts. And the same goes for your weapons. That right there is gonna make a lot of people happy. 
People love that kind of freedom, and to have it in this style of game is a huge positive. There's a lot more I feel like I want and need to share with this video, but I'm gonna save that for those future videos. This one's gone on long enough, and it's just my initial impressions. I'll have a ton of videos about World War III coming out here pretty soon, so uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss those. All in all, I've missed this game. I love the way this new game feels. It's brand new to me. It's smooth. The gunplay is great. The customization is fantastic. The ballistics are out of this world amazing. The graphics are great. I'm telling you, this is going to be one of the biggest games of this season. I'll be playing the 2042 beta as well, and I'm going to compare those two in a video probably, but honestly, that's going to be pretty hard because these are two very different games with very different gameplay loops. So I don't necessarily think these two will compete, but more like complement each other. This one's more for pure infantry combat, and Battlefield is more the razzle-dazzle, big booms, everything's changing, crazy hectic gameplay all the time. But we'll just have to see. That's all for this one. Thank you so much for stopping by. You guys that are left here are my true heroes. Stay safe out there, be courageous, and more importantly, stay tactical.